we're going to talk about a topic that I thoroughly enjoy, and that is comfort zones. And I want to share with you a diagram that I've put together. Uh, originally, I was actually looking online on Google for um, for a diagram that best re represented uh, comfort zones. But to my surprise, there were so many variations of all this woo-woo nonsense rubbish that uh, I just felt just was wrong. Uh, it just wasn't appropriate. So I've put together my own version. And this is uh, a diagram that is certainly come from plenty of years experience being around uh, thousands of approaches, whether it be with other people or myself as well. And this has been my experience of how the uh, the comfort zones work for a guy and especially in dating. So let's take a look at the uh, the diagram. So first of all, let's start off with the comfort zone. So this is going to be where you are obviously in the most relaxed and comfortable state. This is where there's going to be very little to no anxiety at all. You've got absolutely nothing to uh, to stress over. This is just your relaxation state. This is just you in your normal everyday life that you have developed this routine or habit of and you are just literally sticking with it. But that also does mean though that sometimes we can develop very bad habits and we can also feel very comfortable just being trapped within that. So this is where then the first step would be the fear zone where you are essentially just kind of testing the waters. You are just dipping your toe into new experiences that perhaps you haven't felt before or maybe you have experienced, but the reference experience that you got um, isn't one that is of benefit to you. So uh, it's possible like when you were a kid, you might have been told like, don't talk to strangers. Um, you know, every parent looking after their child, absolutely fantastic. But that can also then have a ripple effect later on in life where then you might have a lot of social anxiety and you might be scared to actually just have a conversation with people or start conversations or ask questions or whatever. So what has happened here is that the fight or flight response has essentially been programmed to understand that, oh no, you shouldn't do this. We need to step back into the comfort zone where you are going to be safe. So this is where the brain can kind of maybe be a bit overprotective, looking out for you. Um, but yeah, it, it's not really being beneficial to you at all. So this is where you do need to kind of like test and question those beliefs by just stepping into that fear zone. So once you though are testing some of these limiting beliefs or um, ideologies and stuff maybe that you have experienced um, over um, your, uh, your development or growth in life, then this is where eventually the fear state becomes uh, a lot less stressful. Um, in here, of course, you would have felt some anxiety, but maybe that would start dying down a bit when you get some more positive reference experiences saying like, oh, actually this isn't so bad. And you go into the next phase, which is the flow state. So this is where then you can become incredibly uh, grounded and very present and very much in the moment. Uh, I think a lot of people who get into flow state, they kind of describe it as you get this like hyper focus, you know, your attention is just so in the moment and you're willing to learn and accept uh, any bit of information that you're essentially gathering. So if you're talking to people, you're going to be very present and listening to everything that they're saying. You're going to absorb that information and take it in and hold it. So the flow state uh, zone is where you can tend to see the biggest learning curve in your development. And certainly it can give you that new uh, experience or experiences that are going to tell you like, actually, yeah, this isn't so bad. And this is what can allow you to start expanding your comfort zone. So the more you can then stay in this flow state, then the more your comfort zone expands as this then becomes the new norm. But what happens though, if you start to overdo it? Now, it doesn't necessarily always mean that you are 
you know, overdoing it with your uh, pushing of your self-development, it can also be an element of uh, fatigue that can kick in. So perhaps maybe if you are someone who um, is, again, using the example of talking to strangers, then you might end up getting to a point that actually you're getting a bit tired. You know, you've used your brain a lot, being very present and whatnot, and you, you're just starting to get tired. And over pushing that, especially when you're tired, can start causing that stress and anxiety to build up. And it can start really ramping up if you keep pushing it when you now are in this phase of like, I'm not really in the mood. But also it can be a case of where you might be pushing the boundaries a little too much. And that can also be where the uh, the stress zone um, takes place here where you can overdo it. So let's just, uh, before I explain about the rubber band effect, and this is where, um, in fact, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for the moment, but let's now just kind of go through this diagram, but in the with the concept of dating in mind, especially with cold approaching. So your comfort zone would um, essentially be that, you know, if you're on your way to work or to the gym or going shopping and stuff, you'll see people that maybe you're going to be attracted to, but you're just choosing not to do it. You will give yourself every excuse under the book uh, and say like, oh, you know, maybe she's too busy or like, why would she want to stop for me? Oh, I feel really bad today or oh, I'm not in the mood. Oh, I'm going to be late if I if I try and stop and talk to someone, you know, I have to get to my location fast and, and so on. But again, this is just that um, that voice in your head going to say the ego but it's not really so much the ego um but it's just those limiting beliefs are going to be kicking in and telling you like like no we need to be staying here um and even that would be dabbling even in on that fear zone as well where you might be contemplating this idea to go and talk to someone because you're like you know what i keep doing the same thing over and over but i really don't want to say what if i want to take the opportunity just to give a compliment or just say hi then this would be yeah, where the uh, the fear zone might then uh, take place here. Um, so this is where then you have to test these beliefs. And this is can be where like also a, a dating coach can step in and certainly help to push you into those interactions, especially if you're dedicating uh, that time and effort on this area of your life then they will encourage you to go and, you know, talk to people as well as give you the support that you need and overwrite whatever those inner voices might be telling you where you might be doubting yourself, but a dating coach will say, no, 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 you can do this. I believe in you. Look, this is what you can say. Um, or what did you notice about them that you can bring up? Go for it. And just having that level of support system can be the, uh, the, the, one of the things that actually can take you into a flow state. It can be very difficult for guys to uh, do it on their own because, you know, again, if you're trying to break out of that comfort zone, it, it's safe to say that you do need support for it because otherwise you would have just broken out of that comfort zone uh, a long time ago. So, you know, routine plays a big element here. But once you're in that flow state and you are, uh, talking uh, to different women and having different interactions, then suddenly you are going to start learning that, oh, you know what? This isn't so bad. And then you might get more comfortable with asking questions and being very curious about, you know, the women that you're talking to. You might then be a little bit more daring and you might start like asking for phone numbers or going on dates and whatnot as well. But all of these would be very incremental steps, just again, testing the water um, until you are developing a new comfort zone or that reference experience that is telling you like, okay, the fight or flight does not need to react or behave in the way that it was before I've now had this new support and experience. But where does then uh, the stress zone um, take place with this? Well, let's just say that maybe you are a very anxious guy and, you know, you are now being pushed to go into interactions or maybe talking to women in cafes or museums and stuff. And that environment, maybe that's what really stresses you out. Um, and um, that level of stress will obviously build that anxiety up. And the more anxiety that you have in your body, 
the more difficult it is to be thinking about things to say. And then that can cause its own perpetuating cycle of you're then even more stressed because you don't know what to say or you can't think of what to say. And that's causing, causing more stress. So suddenly then that's just going to cause this ripple effect to that point that something like the rubber band effect can kick in. So what is the rubber band effect? Well, this is where if you go from the comfort zone to try and push it into flow state too hard and too fast, then you automatically go into the uh, the stress zone. And this can kind of like an elastic band, if you were to pull it, it can then like spring back all the way to where it first started. So let's say you are a very anxious guy and you're only just getting used to the idea of talking to strangers. So you might though still be very nervous, very anxious about having conversations. And at most, the only thing that you need to be doing is maybe just giving compliments and asking for directions or asking, oh, where did you get that that coffee from? Or like, oh, I'm, I'm looking for something. You know, just very, very simple things. Rather than potentially being told, right, you need to go and uh, talk to a group of women and that is going to help you with your confidence. It, it won't. So that overstretch is just going to freak you out, which is, I think, probably the great word for this. It's just going to freak you out. And you're going to go straight back into your comfort zone. And then any push to try and just get you back into that fear zone again, just to dabble testing the water again, you're going to be afraid to do so. So if you are working on... Um, your anxiety and certainly you're looking to push your comfort zones you have to consider doing it very incrementally so how then do you get yourself from the comfort zone into the flow state and then you can stay there because you know it's very clear that the flow state is the best zone to be in if you certainly want to learn uh, and grasp the new life skills that you need to understand that actually you know, the world isn't as bad as uh, as you think it is. And this can be my new comfort zone. So again, you have to take incremental steps, just do very, very small things until they become uh, the new norm, until they become the comfort zone. And, you know, when guys like do like uh, a weekend boot camp or they do like a week training or something, you know, you have to also understand that Rome wasn't built in a day you obviously are going to be pushed to your limits by working with a coach. But the problem then that happens after a coach uh, or after coaching is that then guys have that rubber band effect because they realize then they can't do anything on their own. It, everything that they learned during the, uh, the training was very intense. It pushed them to their limits. But now they've kind of resorted back into their comfort zone because they're just not willing to test that fear zone again or put themselves into that flow state. So a support system is certainly a really, really important thing here. You know, if you're going out with someone who can certainly um, hold you accountable or just, you know, give you that support that you need, whether you're at the same level or at different levels, um, just to take those incremental steps to get yourself into that flow state. That is the important thing. Just get yourself into the flow state. And once you're there and you know you're there because you'll feel that that presence and being grounded, then that is when you can start pushing your limits and you'll know what things are going to be in your stress zone and what sort of things are going to be in your fear zone. And the perfect balance is really kind of like testing both. So it could then be maybe as a fear zone thing, just going up to a stranger and giving compliments and just, uh, you know, trying to have a conversation. But a stress zone might be then to try and do that exact same thing in a coffee shop or in a museum, in a gallery, in a shop, etc., or in an environment that certainly would uh, mean that you'd have more of the spotlight effect on you. But again, you build up to it. You don't have to try and do everything within like a day or a week or a month. You know, you've got all of the time in the world to to uh, to work on yourself and to, to incrementally build yourself up to it. And it is OK to pace yourself at a level that is right for you as long as you are constantly testing that fear zone and a little bit of the stress zone. 
because as long as you can get that equilibrium, you will always find that you will eventually find a state of comfort um, in being in the flow state, not to not to mix these up. Um, but when you are in the flow state long enough, then what happens is that comfort zone essentially expands up to this point of where you are comfortable in this flow state and then imagine it as it has like a reset and then now this is the comfort zone. So you may be being able to talk to strangers on the street, striking up conversations might now then become the new comfort zone after a couple of months. And then the stress zone might be then testing your new skills that you've developed over time in much more stressful indoor environments, let's say. So hopefully that that kind of at least makes sense for you. But uh, before I certainly do sort of finish this off, I think what a great exercise um, for you to consider is I want you to be writing down what things, uh, especially in dating, would you consider to be putting yourself in the fear zone and what would you consider putting yourself into the uh, the stress zone? And I've given this exercise to people in the past and it's always a really interesting one because it brings up a really important point. And that is one man's fear zone is going to be another man's stress zone, you know, or even comfort zone for that matter as well. So one person might be very comfortable with talking to people on the street and another person might be very anxious at the idea of even going up to stop a person on the street. So what do you have to do in that aspect? Well, you have to then bear in mind, and especially like how a coach would, but you have to bear in mind, especially if you're going out with like a wing or a friend or whatever, then you have to cater to the level that they're at. Pushing them into interactions that are the same level as you that is just going to throw them straight into that stress zone. And in fact, they will have the rubber band effect and they will find it very difficult to continue their day practicing and developing their social skills. So you have to encourage them to just start small, get comfortable with that and then develop it and grow it so they can get into the flow state. They can test new um, new experiences in the fear zone and certainly in the stress zone for that matter too. So to finish up, I would love to hear what things stress you out. What things would you say are in your fear zone? What things are you comfortable with are certainly in your comfort zone or flow state zone? And I also would love to know what things really stress you out. What things would certainly give you that rubber band effect? And also, have you actually tried to, to test any of these as well? So this for me is uh, certainly a topic, again, that I absolutely love. And I think for any guy who is working on their personal development, having an understanding of their comfort zones certainly allows you to cater to your development even better because you know what you can do, you know what you can't do, and you know what your limitations are. And it allows you to strategize um, making those decisions more accordingly on what is the best way to evolve that. You know, same with like if you were in the gym, you wouldn't go straight to like the 100 kilogram weights. If you were in there, uh, a personal trainer would say, right, start off on 10 kilogram. Then you're going to go to 15 next week. And then the week after might be 20 and so on. And then you build up to that incrementally until that stress zone, that crazy number is actually just going to be the new norm for you. So like subscribe to the channel certainly stay up to date on more content that i'm putting out if you need help being held accountable with your comfort zones i am also a life coach and uh, if you want to check out my services have a look in the uh, description below where certainly i can help to hold you accountable on your development journey and uh, also push you uh, well, i wasn't say yeah push you into um these uh, stressful situations but certainly incrementally working on that fear zone and also just getting you to dabble a little bit into the stress zone you can find that equilibrium in that flow state and i can assure you certainly over time especially if you're working with a dating coach too you will get some phenomenal results as time goes on so uh thank you for watching do all of those things that i mentioned like subscribe leave the comments below check me out on my website and uh, i look forward to making another video for you very soon